Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the Introduction to Safety Practices, Part 2. Today I'm going to talk about the MSDS, and then I'm going to conclude with some emergency preparations. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with the MSDS. Part of any safety-first approach to a safe work environment includes knowing what hazards are present in the workplace. Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDSs, contain safety information on materials and chemicals found in the workplace. An MSDS will contain all known health issues associated with a particular material. It also outlines what protective measures must be taken to reduce risks from exposure and what actions must be taken if the chemical is ingested. The MSDS will also detail the physical properties of the material, as in its flash point or boiling point. And the MSDS will outline the proper steps to take when disposing of it. Each workplace will have its own set of MSDSs as each workplace is different. It is your responsibility to understand the hazards that are present, so you need to know where the MSDSs are kept for your workplace. It's time to move on to some emergency preparations. Part of any safety-first approach to a safe work environment includes preparing for various types of emergencies. These preparations should be detailed in a set of emergency procedure documents. The procedures should contain escape routes, including where employees will meet to ensure that all are accounted for, information on what type or types of fire suppression systems are present, as well as what steps have been taken to increase the day-to-day -day safety in the workplace. There are some building layout considerations that concern emergency preparations. All walls should have a minimum two-hour fire rating. This is the amount of time it takes for the average fire to burn through the wall. Exterior doors and other secure doors must be designed to resist forcible entry, but the doorways should also be designed to be able to handle the amount of expected traffic in an emergency. Fire suppression systems should be appropriate for the type of asset that they are protecting. A wet pipe system is not appropriate for a server room or data center. However, a halon system may not be the correct fire suppression system for an open cubicle area. Backup power should also be incorporated into the building layout. Not all areas are going to require backup power, but for some areas it is going to be essential. Emergency preparations need to include escape plans. Each area or room should have an escape plan map posted in a prominent area, ideally by the main access doorway into that area. This map needs to show the preferred route out of the facility. The map should also include the meeting area outside of the danger zone. This allows for supervisors or managers to account for all personnel. Safety or emergency exits should be clearly marked. They should also be well lit with independent battery power sources. They should be wide enough to handle the expected traffic and emergency exits should always be kept clear of obstructions. Talking about doors, there are some other considerations. Are they going to be fail open or fail close? So what happens to doors with electronic locks when the power is out needs to be considered. They could be fail close type doors. With this type of door, when the power is cut, the locks engage. These are suitable for keeping secure areas secure in an emergency. Then there are fail open type electronic locks. When the power is cut, the locks disengage. These are suitable for non-secure areas or for areas where two-way traffic is going to occur in an emergency. In many facilities, fail-closed type fire doors are used. Usually they're kept open by electromagnetics. Once the fire alarm has been tripped, the power is cut to the magnets and the doors swing closed. 
They usually do not lock when closed, but are used to help slow the spread of fire or other dangers. Another emergency preparation that should be considered are emergency alert systems. All facilities should have an emergency alert system installed. It is usually required by local building codes. These are your fire alarms and whatnot. Combinations of sound and light have proven to be highly effective. In some situations, it may be advisable to connect the facility to the National Emergency Alert System. Now that concludes this session on Introduction to Safety Practices, Part 2. I began with the MSDS and then I concluded with emergency preparations. On behalf of PACE IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.